Today we're going to be talking about reconnaissance and counter reconnaissance within Flashpoint campaign Southern Storm. During my research for this video, I found a cool quote for you guys, and I think it's going to tie everything together. Forces that cannot sustain themselves inside the weapons engagement zone, or the WEZ, are liabilities. However, those that can sustain themselves while executing reconnaissance and counter reconnaissance activities create a competitive advantage. That's the, from the Force Design 2030. I'll include that down in the description below. I would like to find some tactics from like the Earth, from the Cold War era, and I will create another video on those. So let's just talk about our recon units. Right here, we're playing as the NATO forces, where the U.S. and we're gonna kind of classify these units a little bit because you want to you have light reconnaissance, you have heavy reconnaissance, and then within each of those like roles of reconnaissance, light and heavy, you have like um, assets. So like you'd have like a Bradley would be a Bradley with thermal imaging would be a very high level asset, mostly because of how far the tow mis missile can shoot its mobility as well as its thermal sensors whereas if you have like an m113 it may not be as valuable as that bradley and then you have units like humvees and a few other types of recon units that might only have binoculars no thermal sensors and they can't really operate freely outside of the zone obviously there is no command penalty so they can't operate outside of the command radius i'll show you the command radius real quick if we right click this and we go to show chain of command we get this radius and recon units are free to operate outside of their HQ's radius or any HQ's radius. It's what they're trained to do. And that's how they survive on the battlefield. So why we want to talk about the command radius and like kind of classifying our units is because most recon units are going to die on first contact if they're mismanaged or just performing their mission. Remember, it's an extremely dangerous mission. They're out there. They're spotting the enemy and if the enemy spots them or if you have the wrong um, standard operating procedures selected. They may engage those tanks or those IFVs or personal or um, infantry carrying ve vehicles and get blown up and then you kind of lose a very valuable asset. I mean, they can be used to track the um, enemy force. They can be used to recon anti-aircraft. They can be used to recon artillery. So there's a lot of uses for recon. It's a very dynamic mission. It's very challenging. And there's also counter reconnaissance, which is to destroy other enemies or the op fours reconnaissance vehicle. So you can operate more freely within the ba um, battle zone, which I wanted to talk about in this video, but I wanted to talk about it more in the terms of tactics. And it's hard to find counter reconnaissance tactics. Obviously you just want to show them before they spot you. But then as we talk about how we classify them, you're going to understand a bit more how counter reconnaissance is performed. So let's start with this unit right here. This is, I believe, a Commando M706 Commando Recon Unit. It's a platform. It's a looks like an infantry fighting vehicle. It's wheeled, so that means it's not going to go very well through like mud. It may it may be a bit faster on the roads, but if it starts to rain, um, it will get bogged down. That sort of thing. So that's something you can um, kind of take, kind of understand weapons. So it has a 30 caliber M29 vehicle weapons grant, um, vehicle support weapon, 1200 meter range, armor piercing um, at around 1200 meters. So it's not going to shred T90s or anything, but you may be able to at least return fire to those BTRs and kind of shred them a little bit. So this is kind of, <laughs> this is a lightweight asset on the battlefield. It's going, it can, it's very mobile. It doesn't really, let's take a look at the sensors. It doesn't have any thermal sensors. So this is very, very low on your like. You want this unit performing recon far in front of your more valuable recon assets because one, it's more expendable. I mean, yeah, it's an American life or however you want to look at it. It's a weapon system. But if this is the one to make first contact, you'd want this one because it also depends on like the mission you're performing when you're kind of laying out your reconnaissance plan. But if you're just going like, I want to spot the enemy force, this is going to be the one that's going to spot the enemy force for you. And it's going to be the one that if you have the wrong SOPs, it's going to be the one you want to lose. Now, if we hit this arrow right here, we come across like the cavalry scouts. These have night vision, optical magnification, optical gun sights. They do have rocket propelled grenades. It looks like anti-armor at around 200 meters. So basically each of these hexes right here, if I were to click on one of these hexes, is around 500 meters. So basically, if you want to do any damage to any sort of armored vehicle or at least tanks, T90s, you need to be right on top of them. So basically, you're going to be in the fight with this vehicle, which is not so much the role of a reconnaissance. So it's more of an expendable unit, but it can perform its role. So then we move on to this unit right here, which is an M113 Alpha 1 Dragon. This is obviously a, a tracked vehicle, so it's a little bit slower. It's amphibious. It can cross roads. It may not get bogged down quite as much. So already, 
for this reconnaissance vehicle its mission might just might be slightly different or a bit more dynamic than your commando one it has a bit more survivability what weapon systems does it have on it if we take a look at the weapon systems it has a 50 cal with a 2000 50 caliber with a 2000 meter range and then it has a dragon with a 1000 meter range so not so and it has a slow rate of fire but it it has more anti-tank capability it's ahead of the commando depending on the mission it can do can't really do too much counter reconnaissance if it does come across an enemy recon vehicle you're, you're talking like two hex engagement distance a little more a little less but it can eliminate that video um vehicle and obviously if it came across the commando it's going to win that fight against the commando 100 percent of the time so that's how you start stacking your counter recon versus your recon so we understand that like if we came across like a btr this would win that fight we can perform some counter recon open up the battle space a little bit in that area and then it's just going to allow us to operate more effectively in that region and then once we destroy the enemy's recon we can kind of set up some flanks and maybe scout out their artillery if there is any or any high value assets so then we click this arrow right here we see what kind of cavalry scouts it's carrying with them and it's carrying like grenade launchers uh, the rocket propelled grenades anti-armors laws things like that so it does have a bit more capability or not it has like basically the same capability just like if you want those in infantry to engage it's going to be right on top of the hex like hex on hex combat so now we need to further figure out what kind of sensors this recon vehicle has so how do we so just because it has that atgm doesn't mean it's like that much better what's really going to separate this vehicle right here is this thermal site once you start getting these thermal sites um they allow you to see further or deeper into the battlefield. They allow you to look through smoke unless it's thermal rated smoke. So it's already just like sort of as far as an asset goes or as far as spotting goes, it is much further ahead of the commando. Al al although the commando is much faster, you can kind of use that to move around. So as always, the thermal sites are a bit more important and they're very powerful on the battlefield. So then we just am amphibious and tow capable. So then we move on to our next unit. I called it Thermal. It's actually a Bradley. So now we're talking like heavy. The M113 can be heavy as well. This um, Bradley has a lot more staying power on the battlefield. Remember, like in that quote, it's like these units need to be able to be competitive on the battlefield. They have to be able to operate in that space. And if they do come across an engagement or recon vehicle, they need to have survivability. So we don't want a bunch of liabilities on the battlefield. So our commando is more of a liability depending on where it is in the battle space. So let's take a look at the weapon system. Obviously the 25 millimeter M242 is an extremely powerful gun. It has a fast rate of fire, 150 round burst. It can pierce armor. It has a range of 3,500 meters. So already we're talking like if we were to come across that commando, a BTR, we're going to outrange the BTR. We're going to outrange our commando. We're going to outrange basically most, um, Eastern Bloc forces on the battlefield, which is good for us, right? That means this one, can perform its mission a bit more. It can be a bit more aggressive. It can spot the enemy front lines and it can take out a few high value targets if that's kind of what we wanted to do. But remember, that's not our mission. We're not supposed to screen the enemy force. We're just supposed to spot them. So if we really wanted to kind of like shred a few units. It would be this Bradley. And then obviously there's like the, M the 762 M240, 1200 meter range. But this is when we start talking about anti-tank capability right here. So right, right now, this is a very high value asset. This is not going to be your initial recon vehicle. I mean, I guess it depends on what you want to do with it, but we're talking about, I mean, just with that tow alone, a 3,700, 3,750 meter range, I believe that's just short of the 120 millimeter cannon, but we'll compare them here in a moment. Um, it's already more powerful. I mean, with that tow system or that weapon system alone, it, it, it's basically a force on the battlefield that you can, that the enemy needs to fear. So if there's like a Bradley operating in their back line or if there's like a Bradley kind of just like coming up on their flank, it's something they need to take seriously. And so that, let's go back and let's take a look at the tank. Remember 3750. Let's take a look at our tank real quick. I believe it is an Abrams. So 5000 meter range for armor piercing. So that's like tank on tank, your Sabos. I call them Sabots, your Sabos. And then your high explosive anti-tank only have a 4000 meter range, which you'd probably use on that Bradley. So out. So the Abrams basically outranges the Bradley with its cannon, which is expected both with high explosive anti-tank and 5,000 meter. But remember the Bradley's harder to spot. So if these two were to come across each other, we could definitely inflict some casualties, shoot and move and kind of create a bit of havoc for that enemy's line. Obviously we're not going to 
do like blue on blue, but the NATO forces and the Eastern Bloc forces um, capabilities are there. I mean, they're all different. So that's one thing I wanted to highlight right there. And then we do have a helicopter. I mean, helicopter reconnaissance, it really depends on the mission you're going for. It would be, I would consider like a high value asset, mostly just for its mobility, right? It doesn't carry any weapons, I believe. So we go to subunit inspector, we take a look at their weapons. It's basically an un unarmed platform. It flies at the nap of the earth. <laughs> so just like a little off the ground, it spots, it's, it's just gonna spot, like, right? It's gonna get into a position, it has thermal sights, it has good range. It's going to spot the enemy force, and then it, you're just going to be able to drop clusters on it, DPICMs, um, high explosives, smokes, and kind of just screen that force and kind of cause havoc on them. That's like the initial things I wanted to talk about, and then we're going to kind of recon these units who come along this pathway. I have several recon units for that. We're going to send our commando up. We're going to send our M113 up, and then obviously we will send our um, Bradley up. So then we want to take a look at our standard operating procedures. So with our recon vehicles, with this new update, there are several standard operating procedures. You don't need to worry about the big menu anymore. You can just go up to SOPs at the top, select recon, and then you can say sit and observe, silently screen, or screen and fight. You don't want you, so this comes down to like, remember when I was talking about the SOP manager, say we brought our commando up. Let's drag our commando over. And we said, Right, this is a very lightly armored vehicle. It doesn't have a lot of assets. It can't really do much too much on the battlefield. We're not going to have this unit screen and fight. Whereas if we had like our Bradley selected, our thermal, a screen and fight is much more appropriate for this unit. But it's not something we really want it to do. But it does have the capability. It does have the survivability, and it can perform that mission. The M113, I would put kind of in the middle. I would not screen and fight with it, but it is something that you can do. So with this SOP menu, you can set up all kinds of tactical initiatives, acceptable losses with your recon vehicles. I wouldn't do or die. You want very minimal losses. These are assets on the battlefield. You want them to just to constantly move, scout out the force. If they do become engaged, you want them to just get out of there. Just like, hey, we spotted the force, drop some artillery, move on. Direct fire discipline. So this is going to come down to like um, what you want them to do. Obviously with a commando the we want a refuse to fire and that's basically i mean it doesn't really matter but a refuse to fire it just doesn't have the the fire the capability and then you have like hold fire hold until fired on you can do that as well point blank zero to one hex or a third range um one one to three hexes things like that i mean th th those are just what your mission set want what you want it to be with your mission set um, relocate after the, I mean this is all going to be what you want to do obviously with the commando you want to relocate after receiving fire it's not going to have staying power um, movement um, concealment roads it really depends on so if we're going to go with concealment or roads this would be much better but with a wheeled vehicle remember if you go off the road it's going to be a bit slower so initially you'd want it to go down these roads spot a little bit but that's really up to you and what you plan on doing. So when we kind of move into this position right here to scout these vehicles, we're just going to um, test out one of the SOPs. We're going to say sit and silently observe. So we're going to say recon, <laughs> sit and observe. And that's going to be for these two vehicles. This one as well. We could have selected them both and just said that, but we did not. <laughs> and that's basically just setting that SOP. And then we're just going to give it a move hasty up into this position. And it's just going to screen. Same with this. We could set several um, paths down here if we wanted to and say commit, screen. And then we could actually change all of these if we wanted to as well, edit waypoint. We don't need to do that right now. So this units, so these two units are just going to perform a scouting. And then this recon unit, we're going to actually come up and around and possibly engage some units. So for this one, we're going to say move hasty. He's going to move down this road through these woods and then actually it really doesn't matter because that's kind of the movement we want he's a really strong unit so as he moves like down this pathway i mean this is well within his range or his engagement range three thousand meters he could go up along this ridge line but we're going to kind of get him into the fight a little bit and then we have the tanks we're not going to do anything with our tanks so we're going to hit start units are going to start moving we know they're going to start moving they're going to kind of reconnaissance for our vehicles. As you see, we're doing our first couple of spots. These are actually really small trucks, so they're a bit more difficult to spot. And then once they get into position, 
All right. So now this unit's almost into position. We're going to adjust its operating procedure. So we're going to say over here, we're going to say adjust SOP. We're going to say do or die. We're going to say minimal losses. And then we are actually, uh, when you start doing this, it's better to, um, we're going to say medium range to kind of use the SOP manager when you start um, like changing what you want your SOP to be. So we'll say minimal losses, preferred standoff range, two, two hexes. We'll say around two thirds. Um, re relocate after taking losses. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense for this vehicle. It's a reconnaissance vehicle. We don't really want it to be um, in the fight. So here's our maximum effect, two thirds. <laughs> We're gonna see if he engages anyone because he's only moving 500 more meters. That should be two thirds, but I'm just going to change it just a little bit because I'm not exactly sure what two thirds is going to be. So I guess it's maximum range is fine. Two thirds are maximum. Does that save or I, I should save? We had to hit close. All right, so basically once this um, Bradley's into position, we are going to begin engaging. And we're gonna move our tank over here next. And I'm not gonna do too much with this tank. And then he's gonna screen and we could kind of scout things out with this um, helicopter. We could give him a hunt command, I believe. And he's just going to screen. All right. Oh, I forgot that, like, there we go. Everyone's going to continue to move. We're going to see if we do any sort of reconnaissance. That helicopter is really, really fast. Tank is moving into pace, place. We should start seeing units here in a moment. Remember, these are really small units. Um, I, for some reason, I opted to choose trucks instead of, like, heavy, um, like, heavy mechanized vehicles. So if they're not moving, they're a bit hard to spot. And then we're just going to play through a few turns. They're going to show back up here in a moment. We're going to move forward one more hex. Kind of getting a bit crazy with it. And we're just trying to just spot these guys out. And it's always a bit tricky to spot these smaller vehicles. And we're just going to move up onto that objective then. We're not seeing them. They're probably a lower than the tree line. So let's screen and let's just keep performing. Remember, we're not like trying to like get into a big fight right here. We're just trying to spot them out, use our thermal sensors, and there we go. That's a bit strange, um, but it could be because this helicopter is in position, but that tank really did spot people out. And I've noticed that a bit lately, and I really want to test that because it seems like the recon struggles a little bit. This guy should have no problem doing anything. He should work to engage. So if we go down here to show, or not show, we just bring up his SOP manager. We can kind of make him a bit hostile, I believe. And he may not choose to engage anything, but it's really up to him, but he should. I don't have anything saying that he can't engage. So let's just say, well, relocate. We're gonna say relocate after each each fire mission we're going to say close reply to this unit all requesting units maximum range close and we're just going to play a few more turns let's go through 15 minutes that tank is tearing everyone up he does not like the existence that's an definitely some powerful vehicles so let's see what we got they're moving on to the objective which is perfectly fine that hel recon helicopter is relocating and we kind of lost um line of sight right there so at around 3500 meters and we're just trying to perform some reconnaissance. I would like for this Bradley to engage. So I'm trying to get him to engage for the video. But it, we're at 20 minutes now. And I feel like we've covered everything we wanted to cover. So beyond all that, peace out, guys.